Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Uh, welcome to episode four of A Friend to Knit With podcast. The last time I was here, it was the beginning of October, and I think the leaves were just beginning to turn, and now they have all fallen off. We had some snow, it melted, and um, yeah, now it's just a little bare back there, and it's, I apologize for the lighting. I just, this is where I always knit, and this is where I want to bring you so you can be knitting with me, where I knit. Uh, the beginning of October, after I filmed um, well, October 10th, my husband and I flew out to Oregon to do a little wine tasting. And on October 11th, the morning of October 11th, I received a text um, saying that my son Andrew had been in an automobile accident. So flew home and it's just been a little tough ever since. We are so blessed and so fortunate and so grateful that all boys will be okay. But what had happened is, it was a half day of school. There were four boys in the car. My son Andrew was driving, which poses all different emotions. Um, but they were, they were on the golf team and they were um, getting ready to go practice for their big tournament the next day. So they were gonna go pick up some clubs from another boy's house and head to the golf course to practice. And uh, my son was speeding and lost control, flipped the car and ran into a utility line, utility pole. So uh, the pole fell on the car, Andrew was trapped in the car, all boys were rushed to the hospital. And by the grace of God, they are all here to live out beautiful lives. Thank the dear Lord. But um, Andrew was pinned in the car for two hours and broke his femur in several places and had a titanium rod put in and, you know, he was lucky. They said to, you know, be able to have his leg for the rest of his life and for it to work properly. So he is in physical therapy and back at school a half day. So we are seeing lots of progress because of lots of prayers and our community was amazing. So anyhow, for those of you that had reached out that had heard maybe on my Instagram account or on the blog, um, thank you so much. And all the love and prayers are so appreciated. So anyhow, there wasn't a lot of knitting that took place at the very beginning of that, you know, exhaustion and worry and we're, we're still taking care of our our emotional sides, healing those. Um, but I did, I, I mean, I didn't finish any big projects. I, once I started knitting again, my friend Michelle said, wow, that is a really good sign. And it's true. So I wanted to share um, just one, this is Toast and Toasty, but I love how with the um, Hedgehog Fiber Merino DK, I was able to get two pairs out of one. So I love when a skein, you know, has a lot of yardage and you can get two, I mean, it's kind of, I don't think you can be knitting these. Maybe you can, you're speed knitters, but um, if you wanted them for holidays, but I love to be able to get two projects out of one. So this is toast and this is toasty and toast is just an arm warmer. And then toasty has a thumb. So I know a lot of people accidentally buy the wrong one. So toasty is a thumb and toast is, um, you know, an armor, which I prefer because I like to be able to do that. I like to be able to do this. I like to be able to do that. I, you know, so those are my personal favorites, but hedgehog fiber, um, Merino DK, I love, love, love this yarn. It feels amazing. So, and then I had time to write up something that I had started earlier when I was uh, recovering from my foot. Um, but this is Toast with Pearls. And it, as you can see, I hope you can with this lighting, but um, it has a little pattern in it. Um, it's like a diamond pattern. And it's great if you've never done any stitch definition, 
it's great. I, I think these seem a little dressier than just the toast, my personal thought. But um, yeah, so this is called Toast with Pearls. And it is over on Ravelry if you're interested in making a pair. I made this out of Classic Elite's Adelaide yarn. And I really like it. It, um, yeah, the stitch definition is nice with it. Sorry. But, okay, that's Toast with Pearls. Now, I have only made one gift for Christmas. How about you guys? A lot of gift knitting going on. Sometimes I do it and sometimes not. But this year, I did one my hairdresser loves uh, when I wear those mitts. And so I made her a pair of those. They're just uh, short little fingerless mitts. I actually made um, one extra because not on purpose, but it's a little longer, so I had to make another pair. I mean, another glove. But they're, they're super fast. I like Lion Brands Woolies for these. You guys, it's inexpensive. Not that that's the reason why for the gift, but um, it just seems to wear really well. And for those people that might not you know, want to have to hand wash or take care of their knitwear, it, they can throw in the washing machine in the dryer. So I love that. And then you can just tell them that. And on the little label, I'll just probably write a little label um, with washing instructions. So that's, I only made one gift. That's it. But um, I also wanted to share the nice people at Knit Crate sent me a bouquet of yarn. Isn't that awesome, you guys? So I wanted to share it with you in case you, um, you know, ever wanted to brighten someone's day that was having a rough time. Uh, so what they did is use, or what she did, um, straight needles. And she just, see as you can see, stuck the yarn through there and tied it up, wrapped it in the tissue and tied it up, of course, with a piece of yarn. So I thought this was just such a clever idea and for the knitter in your life, I think that's fantastic. You can even do this for Christmas. Like if you take them a bouquet of red and green yarn. So cute. I don't know. I just thought of that right now. I don't know if that's a cute idea or not. I kind of think it could be a cute idea. <laughs> so, all right. So I did buy a couple things and I do have only one thing on the needles. Well, I have a couple things on the needle but my Sunset Highway is kind of, I'll explain that one at another date. I'm not excited to work on it this time of year. And uh, do I have anything else on the needles? A pair of socks, but um, they were gonna be in October and I lost my enthusiasm for those. So I have one sweater that Libby, my daughter, um, asked me actually to make. She's in school, she's away at college, and she texts me a picture of this hotline sweater. Um, this is, this diagram is kind of, I mean, online, I, it's actually being modeled. But um, it's the hotline sweater from Wool and the Gang, and it's out of their Take Care Mohair, and this is the Misty Mauve that she chose. Um, so it's funny because I was working on it last night. She came home from school last night. I'm so excited. Now I have all of my kids home from college, two home from college and then Andrew here. So it's nice to have us all together. But um, so I was working on this, which is the sleeve. And she said, mom, is that all you have? I said, yeah, sorry, sweet girl. That's all I have so far. Because at the time when she said it, I thought, oh, this is good. I could surprise her with it. I thought she would have seen um, the other pieces, but now I'm gonna hide them. <laughs> but, um, so I have the front and the back done. So maybe I can, I have six days I can, and this is on 11 needles. I'm pretty sure I can get this finished. So that's what's on my needles, and I'm only gonna work on that till I finish it. Um, and then the other couple things I purchased, um, have you guys seen the Humulus sweater? Um, I wanted a sweater with just a simple yoke, and so this kind of fit the bill for that. And I've decided, because my Sunset Highway, that's kind of why I'm not excited to work on it, because I don't see myself wearing the colors that it's out of, but I decided just to go with grays. 
and this is Quince and Company's Lark. And it's really nice. It's really uh, sort of lofty, but super light. And I've read where it's warm and light. And so I'm going to do the yoke out of the dark shade and make a light gray sweater after I finish Libby's hotline sweater. And then, have you guys been paying attention to Sandy by the Lakeside's um, updates? The last one, uh, I was out of town, so I couldn't check that one out, but I did want to get her new signature bag, which is like a gray plaid with a little gray gingham or gray pipe or gray ticking. It's grays and it's the, her really cute bag with a zipper on the top and she has these cute little tassels. But you know, she's also dyeing yarn and I was able to snag. Um, I had the, oh, two updates ago, I had the bag in my cart and I had some yarn in the cart and by the time I went to check out, the bag was already gone. So if you put it in your cart, check out quickly because they go like that. But this is her Casual Friday um, fingering weight yarn. This is, I hope there's pudding. You can see those colors. Um, and then I also have this exceptionally ordinary which is, um, you know, purples. It would look great with Libby's new sweater, like all these colors together. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I don't know, I'm gonna, after the first of the year, come up with probably just socks, but maybe not. Maybe I can do a cowl or something. Um, if anybody has any suggestions for something great to make about that, that would be wonderful. Um, I. I did want to share something else I had been working on um, in June before I hurt my foot and then Andrew's accident. But um, I came up with a couple of products that I was going to sell on the blog. At um, There'll be a link over there. But here's a front to knit with coffee cup, tea cup, soup cup, whatever you want to put in there. Um, but it is not for sale yet because I'm working on packaging. So that's been the hardest part of this and I just haven't worked on putting much time or effort into it. Um, the other thing is I'm really excited about is this A Friend to Knit With journal slash project keeper slash notebook. Um, it has graph paper so you can, I love graph paper, it's my favorite paper, but so I kind of thought what I would want in a journal, thinking what the knitter loves, and I thought graph paper was a must. You can graph out, you know, chart things out, keep track of your projects. I have so many notebooks, you guys, through the years where I write the begin, the start date of my project, and if there's a pattern repeat, I write that down. If there's, um, you know, any other, you know, chart I have to follow or keep track of my rows, I use this. I use a notebook. So that's why I thought this would be really fun to have something like that. So in the back, I put a pocket here and a pocket here. So you can, um, you know, keep love letters, receipts, the sleeves off your yarn, I mean, the, the bands, is that what you call them, the bands? Um, tuck those in there, your extra ones, because your other ones are gonna go in your project um, envelope. But, so your extra ones in there, or, you know, anything else you wanna keep in there. Uh, lists. So also my favorite part probably of all is a ruler. There, is that focused? Um, because, you know, if you need a ruler and you're out and you have this tucked in your bag, it's super lightweight and you're marking things down, you can measure with this. So anyhow, those are on the blog. Not on the, so if you go to the blog up into, um, I think it says shop, creative, shop. But um, 
you can buy them there. So they'd be a great gift for your new friend that started knitting or yourself or anybody in your knit group. So that's pretty much it. Um, I really appreciate the check-ins and I hope to get here more often and I hope that your fingers are busy and you're enjoying what you're working on and if you're gift giving knitting I hope you're almost finished so that you can start something for yourself and yeah I hope you're baking lots of cookies and drinking lots of green smoothies and you have a very very Merry Christmas so um, yeah until next time take care remember you always have a friend to knit with